Jennifer B. Conweiler, or Dr. Jennifer B. Conweiler, is an author and global speaker hailed as a champion for introverts. Her best-selling books, and we'll talk about her new book in a second, her best-selling books, The Introverted Leader, Quiet Influence, The Genius of Opposites, and her latest book, hold up the hold up the book, Jennifer, hold it up, hold it up. Hold Is that up. my pro- that's my prompt? Creating introvert friendly workplaces have been translated into eighteen languages and have helped to shape the conversation about introverted leadership. Jennifer uh, has worked as a consultant, a learning and development leader, keynote speaker at such organizations as NASA. Astronauts need help. The American Chemical Society, Merck Pharmaceuticals, Bosch, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, Freddie Mac, Kimberly Clark, and IEEE, IEEE. And she happens to be yet another one of my friends, one of the people who I've worked with. Friend of Dave. Uh, Jennifer, um, you're one of these people who occasionally we just bump into each other and we talk about where we are in our lives and what's happening. What kind of challenges are you encountering uh, having to like shift everything from uh, the home, the home base working from home? Well, it, yeah, I like it, like a lot of your guests, you know, it's been an adjustment, but, uh, and so I'll say on the downside or the challenge has been Dave. Uh, and I think after three months now, when we're filming this, it, it's, it's kind of gotten old, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so it, I realized, but it has taught me to really appreciate the importance of connection. So I, um, I really, really value that even mm-hmm. more now, whether we've been able to do it virtually and now we're kind of mm-hmm. here in Georgia vent- venturing out. Right. Um, but the other thing it's really taught me is about tapping into my quiet side mm-hmm. and slowing down. And a lot of my clients and friends and colleagues have said that that's been a gift of forced slowing down. Right. Have you right. found that too? Um, uh, yeah, well, the short answer is yes. The longer yeah. answer is... Another podcast. Another, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's a mini-series. Um, I, I'm, interest, I'm interested in... If we could go down the path of your new book here just a little bit. Um, yeah. We're now in a phase where offices are beginning to reopen again. Workplaces are beginning to reopen again. The doors are opening. The lights are coming back on. The air conditioning is turning back on. W- what... Now that these places of work are, are reopening again, not just offices, but companies are coming back online, what do the leaders of these organizations need to keep in mind in terms of being an effective workplace for introverts? Well, even the question itself is a good one because leaders thinking about the variety of people they're bringing back is going to be an advantage over what has happened before. Um, one of the findings that we we discovered, I did a large survey for this latest work, uh, Dave, on what were the real irksome parts of working in an office. This was pre-COVID. And um, a majority of introverts talked about the open space design. Mm-hmm. We also talked about craving remote work. So we've had an opportunity, right, to have that. Okay, um, let's do it. So yes, but I think what we've all learned is those executives and those people in charge of making decisions have also seen, although we've been talking about this, I, you and I have both been around a long time, probably me a little more than you. We've been talking about this from, oh, I can remember in the 80s, mm-hmm. that remote work was a good way to you know, save the environment, mm-hmm. to give people more of a, a balanced life. It really has not, never happened mm-hmm. totally the way we wanted it to, yeah. but yet- What's happened now, it's been forced. So right. um, I think a lot of uh, leaders are seeing that there is a variety of ways that people can communicate, and it right. doesn't just always have to be in the office. So in answer to your question, I think we're going to see probably more of a hybrid kind of a model where we're going to be more open to mm-hmm. organizations allowing for both the uh, being at home and also working in the office and taking a look at the individual and the job to determine whether or not um, one of those two scenarios can take place or both. Right, right. I think a lot of that old school thinking, we got, you know, we're at a point now where it's just like, yeah, we put up with it long enough. We really need to just get rid of some of it, you know? Well, I'll tell you who's happy about that. The millennials and the Generation Z right. who have been, you know, we've been saying you're not going to keep the ta- that talent yeah. or attract them if you, you have a company that doesn't value autonomy, you know, and people uh, not, you know, what was it out of sight, out of mind? No, that's right. not, the, you know, sure. <laughs> we would uh, do it or like you have to have your face right there. No, sure. that's not, not the case. So I think we've been forced to make changes and right. that's really been a positive thing in a lot of ways. And my final question to you um, is a question I ask everybody, which is, Jennifer, what lessons have we learned 
that we must not forget. Yes. Well, I think for me and for a lot of people, um, that busyness, you know, before before was a drug, was that we were all addicted. A lot of us were addicted to, mm-hmm. and stopping and being present. Um, has allowed us to deal with a lot of the challenges in addition to COVID, all the recent events um, in our society and stopping and really doing Mm self-reflection about my own biases and my own um, attitudes. Um, None of that can happen, Dave, if we're constantly moving on to the next thing. So it starts at whether you're a leader or whether you're an individual trying to be a change agent in some way with ourselves. So I think that's the lesson that I've learned. When I stop, I can do much deeper thinking Yay. Thank you, introverts. Hold up the book. Hold up the book. This is this this is <laughs> that one. And here's thank you, introverted leaders, and thank you. This is coming out on June 16th. <laughs> <laughs> so and it's found where you can find books. So I always appreciate you your belief in this work. And you are what I consider myself as well, Dave, and you particularly have been what we call an advocate or an ally for introverts at work. So thank you. You're very welcome, and it's so good to see you again. I'll talk to you soon, okay? See you soon, my friend. Thank you. Yep.